Hi folks, in today's video we are going to be looking at the structure of the atom, including some important numbers that are within the atom as well. So here's a quick look at the atom. We have three particles inside our atom. We have our neutron, our proton and our electron as well. And the atom consists of two main parts, your nucleus, which is labelled here, which has got the blue and red circles in it, and the electron orbit, which is the black lines surrounding the atom and the nucleus. What's inside the nucleus? The nucleus lives, uh, inside the nucleus we have the proton and the neutron. Um, if you have a look at my diagram further down, the neutron's the one in green and the proton's the one in red. Um, a proton is a positively charged particle and it has a mass of one, what we call atomic mass number, or a unit, sorry. And neutron is neutral, it has no charge and it has a mass of also one. They're both found in the nucleus and overall the nucleus has a positive charge. Outside of the nucleus lies with the electrons, um, and they are found inside electron orbits. Um, we're not entirely sure where they are, but we have a rough idea of where they can be found. Electrons are a negative particle and have a mass of almost zero. Overall, an atom has a charge of zero. Um, despite having protons with positive charges, electrons with negative charges, this is because an atom is overall because the number of protons equals the number of electrons, as I've got in this lovely little box down the bottom. That is why an atom overall is neutral. Here at this table just explains what I've said over the past few slides. Feel free to pause it just to remind yourself of what, every, what and where everything is. Now we're going to look at some important numbers that help us understand structures of atoms and how to identify different elements. The first one's called the atomic number. The atomic number tells us the number of protons. Since all atoms are neutral, it also tells us the number of electrons as well. Um, so the atomic number is the same as the number of protons, which also can sometimes be the number of electrons as well. Um, how do you find it? Where will you find this number? So they're given on page four or five of the data book. And the data book is something you'll get in any test, any exam, or just in class generally to refer back to, so you don't need to memorise the atomic number of elements. For example, if we take argon down the bottom, argon has an atomic number of number 18. And then the other side, let's take 45, for example. 45 is rhodium. And I've just used my data book to find these. So that's just an example. Feel free to pause it and try some other ones for yourself. Another important number is the mass number. Every element has a specific mass. And then we know that the protons and neutrons have a mass of one. And um, so we can add up all the protons and the neutrons in an element to calculate its mass. This is called the mass number. So what is your mass number? Number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Here we have two examples. Um, so here we have calculate the mass number of a helium atom with two neutrons. So you would go to data book to find out the atomic number, which is the number of protons, which is two. You've been told we've got two neutrons, so we just simply add them together to get four. Um, and then this time to calculate the mass of a fluorine atom with 10 neutrons. So again, you'd go to your data book, you'd find out that fluorine has an atomic number of nine which means that's how many protons it's got, and we've been told that there's 10 neutrons, so we just simply add them together to get 19. If we move outside of the nucleus, we can go to the electrons, and the electrons are found in energy levels or energy shells. Um, there's a limit to how many electrons each shell can have, and um, they always fill from like, the first one up. So I've got a little picture here. We've got first energy level, second, and the third. And at the side I said the first energy level always holds two electrons, the second energy level holds eight, and the third energy level holds eight as well. So you only need to know up to 20. And again, it's found in the data book on page six, so you don't even need to worry about where they are because they're in the data book. So electrons like to fill up on their own first before they pair off. So if you imagine we've got a little diagram here, um, and there are four seats on the bus. So you come down, one, two, one, two, three, and you've got an empty seat. Most people tend to sit on their own before they have to sit next to someone else. Electrons are the same. And then as you can see, we've got five, six, seven, eight, so they pair off. Here we have some examples. So we've got what is the electron arrangement for aluminium? So I would go to my data book on page six and I would find aluminium and it's got an electron arrangement of two, eight, three. And then further down, we've got what elements have the arrangement, and you've got lots of numbers. So just add them up to get the atomic number. So if we have a look at the first one, that is 15. Go to your data book, and you will see that phosphorus is the element with 15 electrons, and that's how you would find it out. So feel free to try some of the ones yourself as well. 
hopefully you've noticed a pattern we're also having a look at some of the electron arrangements um the electrons or elements sorry in the periodic table are arranged by their outer electrons so if we take group one elements for example hydrogen's got an electron arrangement of one lithium is two one sodium is two eight one potassium is two eight eight one if you have a look they all end in one so elements in group one always have one outer electron elements in group seven for example so fluorine has two seven chlorines 287 they have seven electrons in their outer shell um, and that's why they react very similar to do with those same number of outer electrons so here we have a big table for a summary and um, we've got elements and we've got things that we need to fill in so we'll start off with any any is sodium sodium has an atomic number of 11 what does that mean well it also means that our protons are going to be 11 and same with our electrons so we can just simply fill all them in now to work out the number of neutrons, we must take away the mass number from the number of protons, which is going to be 12 in this case. Feel free to have a go at the other ones. Um, the ones at the question mark at the bottom, you need to tell me what element they are. And there we have it. That's a brief introduction to the structure of the atom, as well as some important numbers to do with atomic structure and electron arrangement.